正会。Rebirth of the malicious empress of military lineage, Chapter 129. Prince Ru Ai's neighbor Shen Zin and wife returned to the capital with great fanfare, and Shen Miao even stole the limelight in the Ming Chi's tribute banquet in front of the entire court of civil and military officials. And at the same time, when discussion were made in succession. The attention was turned to the original formidable general residence. Since the formidable general is no longer there, the previously general residence had taken off the plaque and changed it to Shen Residence. Initially, when Shen Zin was demoted and left the capital, the Shen family not only did not send charcoal during the snowy weather, they actually brought out the separation from the family and wanted to draw a clear line between them and Shen Zin. Now that Shen Zin was once again highly regarded by Emperor Wen Hu, no matter what intention the emperor had, others took joy and delight at the calamity that the Shen family had. And as for the Shen family themselves, they could only swallow the bitter f r u i t down within Rong Jing Tang. Old Shen Furan was sitting at the couch on the main area. And on the couch, the fur that Shen Zin gave was still there. It was a wolf skin that was hunted in the northwestern region, and due to the long usage, it was worn out till one side was somewhat flat. In the past, when Shen Zin returned to the capital every year, he would always gift old Shen Furan some hide that he had hunted, and they were all good stuff that could not be bought in the Ding capital. Now that Shen Zin no longer gifted any hide. Old Shen Furan could only use the old stuff from the past. Moreover, Rong Jing Tang was no longer as exquisite and luxurious as the past; that even the decorations were lesser than before. Shen Zin originally was rewarded by the emperor continuously, and even the Shen residents was comfortably well off. But now, without Shen Zin's financial assistance and Chen Rikai holding the power of managing the household. The days past were like one pulling on lapels that exposes the elbows, aka overextended and unable to make ends meet. Number three's family is becoming overboarding these days. Old Shen Furan drank a sip of ginseng tea, and the skin on her face seemed to be all wrinkled up. Now that the winter is coming, yesterday I told her to find the tailor to make a cloak for me. She also pushed and pulled. The money all fall into her own pocket. The maid behind carefully rubbed old Shen Furan's shoulders and lowered her head without speaking. Currently, old Shen Furan was getting more temperamental. Ever since one year ago, when Shen Yu on Bo died a premature death due to smallpox, old Shen Furan would often lose her temper. Shen Yu on Bo's premature death was currently the unspeakable pain of the Shen family. One year ago. There was an intermittent number of people contracting smallpox, and even though it was contained at the end and the epidemic did not have a greater impact, there were still some deaths. And unfortunately, Shen Yu on Bo was one of them. In the second household of the Shen family, Shen Gui originally had two sons, and after Shen Yu on died under the executioner's blade, Shen Yu on Bo was to be relied upon. But once Shen Yu on Bo died, Shen Gui almost went crazy. And Ren Wanyan used her waist cloth to hang herself to death in her courtyard after Shen Yu on Bo's death. After Ren Wanyan's death, Shen Gui started to bring in more concubines, but after about a year, there were no movements. Finally, old Shen Furan finally felt something was not right and got a physician to take a look at Shen Gui. The physician said that Shen Gui had taken medication to end offspring and had destroyed the roots for having children. And would not be able to have another child in this lifetime. After old Shen Furan heard this, she fainted, and Shen Gui was stunned silly. After much investigating from Shen Gui, it all landed on the dead Ren Wanyan. She had drugged Shen Gui with the medication to end offspring, and her motive was to secure Shen Yu on Bo's dead son position. But who knew that Shen Yu on Bo's life would be this short? Ren Wan Yun was dead, and naturally Shen Gui could not do anything more to her. So now in the second household, Shen Gui was only left with one child, Shen Dongling. As the tide rises, Shen Dongling was like the boat that floated, and Wan Yiliang had taken on a new lease of life. And became the only person that had a child with Shen Gui. Ever since Shen Gui knew that he would not have any offspring, 
He had no mood to progress forward with his career since there was no one to carry on his ancestral line, so what was the point of fighting for mountains of gold and silver? He now only spent his days drinking and philandering around. Since it was no longer possible for the second household to have any children, old Shen Furen had to turn her eyes towards the third household, Shen Wan. He had not taken any medication to end offspring. But since Chen Rikayu was able to control Shen Wan's heart, even when old Shen Furan sent two Tong Fang to Shen Wan, they were only decorative items in the third household. Old Shen Furan said, not only the one managing the household is muddle-headed, to even say that she was an unmarried daughter of a noble and scholarly house. One do not know where did she learn such habits of the small and significant families. Not willing to help one's husband to branch out his offspring, and only know those vixen moves so that the third household do not have any d son at all. Really do not know what intention there is. Zhang Mama smiled, old Furin need not be angry. The third master currently do not know the advantage of having other young ladies. Third master has deep affections, after a few days, the young ladies that were bought will arrive, and those two that old Furin sent over are all at the age where they are delicate as a flower and refined as precious jade, naturally third master would discover the beauty of them. Old Shen Furin had sent people to the Yang province to buy racabones, aka young ladies. For Shen Wan's kind of people, beauty alone would not be enough to win over his heart. Chen Rikayu also relied on her idyllic appeal in poetry and painting for Shen Wan to look at her differently. Those racabones from the Yang province were all trained since young, thus they were knowledgeable with the four scholarly arts and they had rather good looks, so there was no men that would not like them. Old Shen Furan did not believe that Shen Wan, as a man, would not be greedy for fresher meat since no matter how good Chen Rikayu was, she was already older. Each one is all inciting my anger. Old Shen Furan said in displeasure, even you are also do not know why, but she learned from her mother and have been so superior in her state of mind. I already went to look for so many families for her, and each one were all rich and honorable, but she unexpectedly was not even a tiny interested in any. Could it be that she want to marry to a prince? Zhang Mama frowned as old Shen Furin's habit of shooting one's mouth off, was the one thing that had never changed. She smiled obsequiously, second young lady is born good looking, so one fear that third master has the decision in his heart to keep second young lady for a good family. Keeping here and there would at the end, keeping an enmity. Old Shen Furan scoffed, just look on. I want to see what kind of marriage can number three's family give you er. In Kaiyu Shui Yuan, Chen Rikayu massaged her forehead. Her personal maid Shi King said, Furan, this servant went to Rong Jing Tang to inquire, and old Furan indeed went to get a few racabones for third master, and they would be sent to the residence in a few days time. Furan. Old Furin is slapping your face with this. Chen Rikayu closed her eyes and brushed all the books on the table violently to the floor. The crackling and rattling sound shocked the entire room, and no one dared to say a single word. Even though Chen Rikayu, like before, was still gentle and considerate in front of Shen Wen, but the servant clearly felt that this third Furin, Chen Rikayu's temperament became much more violent in the past two years. Most likely because of the management of the common fund, one would need to pacify the money arrangements of the different households, and also due to old Shen Furin's extravagance, Chen Rikayu had to use her own money to subsidize. In the past she placed herself above the common populace, Naturally one was able to cultivate one's moral character but now one was ridden with ordinary affairs, making one felt that every day was a mess. Of course the most important thing was that there was still no heirs. She coldly said, this old undead bought racabones for her son. Really do not know what extreme shame is. If Shin Wan was present, one fear that he will be in so much shock, his chin would have dropped off. The always gentle graceful and soft person who was forever like the breeze and light train, actually spoke such ugly words now. Hu Yi said, Furin have such good temperament. If this go on, old Furin would sooner or later stuff people in master's room. Chen Rikayu took in a breath and turned around to glance at the two maids, 
Shi King and Hua Yi. These were the two personal maids that she personally promoted and currently they were at the full age, like a ripe a fruit that has a sweet honey flavor all around them. Her lips hooked up. Old Furin is really an old fool. If one really wanted to stuff females in our courtyard, why is there a need to search for those unclean people that one do not even know the background? Not afraid of destroying one's reputation. It is better to find those clean ones by one's side, so one will be assured when used and feel comfortable upon serving. I see that the both of you are also not bad. Although the words were gentle, her eyes were so sharp that both maids jumped in shock and quickly knelt down. These servants do not dare. These servants only wish to serve Furin wholeheartedly and absolutely dare not have other ideals. Chen Rikayu looked down at them for a while and both maids were so scared that their legs were trembling before she then said lightly, Get up. Since you all are not willing, I have no reason to force other to a difficult situation. Many thanks Furin. Both maids got up quivering and their hearts both sighed in relief without communicating to each other. Chen Rikayu looked gentle on the surface, and also treated others kindly but being Chen Rikayu's personal maids, they had seen Chen Rikayu's means and methods. Actually there were also some female servants that were good looking and also rushed to stick by Shen Wan. Even though Shen Wan did not show great interest. He also did not very much refused. Afterwards these servants were then dealt with by Chen Rikayu by some reasons. Not only one did not end up well, it also involved the entire family. Shi King and Hua Yu were very clear in their hearts, that Chen Rikayu was an extremely jealous person in her bones and had very vicious means. If one really got together with Shen Wen, one feared that there would not be even bones left upon death. Chen Rikayu sighed. One can only blame me for not having the ability to give birth to a son for master. If I had birthed a son, how would one be in such circumstances? Shi King and Hua Yi did not dare to respond as children were the torn in Chen Rikayu's heart. Chen Rikayu murmured, now that the Shen residence had ended up in such a situation, there was not even a single son in the younger generation. Even if the second household had, now there was none. Now I am actually envious of Louis Zhu Yan as she have a son and daughter below and no in-laws on top. Shin Xin also treated her like precious gems that there is not even a single Tong Feng. It really make one envious. Thinking about the tribute banquet yesterday, Shen Miao stole the limelight. Then looking at Shen Yu, she was obviously more talented and much better looking than Shen Miao but because of the Shen family gradual decline. It was even harder to find a husband of a good family. Not to mention Prince Ting that Shen Yu anxiously longed for. A glimmer of resentment appeared in Chen Rikayu's heart. She was ambitious and competitive for her entire life, but now was step beneath the feet of the vulgar general's daughter that she despised. Just at this time, an old woman came inside, Furen. There is someone at the residence store looking for old Furen and was stopped by Furen's maid, Furen. One heard that that person come to rely on the Shen family. When Chen Rikayu heard this, she frowned as she thought that it was those far-strung relatives of old Shen Furin that came to seek gratuitous financial help. Thinking that the Jing family was gone but there were still these unfathomable people, her face immediate became cold, since they are seeking gratuitous financial help then give them two silver and send them away. This residence cannot afford to raise idlers. Do not let any cats or dogs in. It is not. The servant scratched her head, Furen. That person do not look like seeking gratuitous financial help, as she said that she was the old general's old acquaintance and she had no more options but to come over to ask for help as there were some circumstances in the family. Old General Shen, Chen Rikayu thought for a while before standing up, show her to the side room, I will go take a look. After Shen Miao returned to the residence from the Feng's Yan pawn shop, it was still very early so she locked herself in the room and no one knew what she was thinking about. When the skies were nearing the evening, Louis Dan returned. She had bought some jewelry and magnanimously gave some to Shen Miao, be a youngest sister. Today we went shopping in a jewelry shop and the jewelry shops in the Ding capital are very big. Young Lady Feng and me selected some for you, unsure if you would like them or not. Take them first and when you want to go out, 
we can go there to shop again. It was an appearance that one had not fully expressed oneself. Shin Miao nodded in comply and after Louis Tang left, she looked at the half box of jewelry, wondering how much money would there be if it was pawned. Shin Zin and entourage also returned shortly after Louis Tan and everyone ate dinner together. Most likely the official matters were smooth as Shen Zin and Louis Zhu Yan seemed to be in a very good mood. Only Shen Mia looked somewhat wan. Louis Ling noticed it and said, Be a younger sister looked out of sorts, is there something that happened? Shen Kaiyu's chopsticks stopped. Younger sister, what is wrong? Shin Miao was surprised for a moment and seeing that everyone at the table was staring at her, she smiled, nothing. It is only that after returning to the capital from the Zhaochun city, one is not used to it. It would be alright after a few days. Shen Kaiyu laughed, what is there not to get used to? If younger sister is not used to it then after a few days, I will be free to bring younger sister to stroll from the west to the east and from the south to the north of the city. After walking a few times, one will get used to it. Be our older brother also bring me along. Louis Dan quickly declared her position, I can also protect be our youngest sister. Nonsense. Louis Zhu Yin said, if your younger sister really follow you around the city, one fear she would be too worn out. Moreover the Ding capital is so big, what if something went wrong? She glared at Shen Zin wanting him to help out. Shen Zin laughed and said, it is fine as long as the children are happy. Stinky brat, if you really bring your younger sisters out to play, then also bring this old one's soldiers. Just beat up whoever dare to create problems. No need to be afraid. Louis Zhu Yan was so angry that she pinched him. The relationship between this husband and wife was boisterous but it also looked very close as one watched. Shin Zin has an awe-inspiring presence outside, but obeys Louis Zhu Yan's words upon returning home. Shen Miao was smiling as she watched on but as she did that, she thought about something unknown and her expression gradually became hazy. She quickly lowered her head so that the people around would not discover it. Louis Ling who was beside her, Noticing her every move also thoughtfully bowed his head. After talking a while after the meal in the hall, everyone returned back to their rooms. Shin Miao was returning to her room and since Louis Tan's courtyard was in front of Shen Miao's, Louis Tan returned first to her room lively. Just as Shen Miao was about to enter her courtyard, she stopped at Louis Ling's voice. Be a younger sister, wait a moment. Shen Miao turned her head and looked at him. Older brother Ling, what is the matter? Louis Ling hesitated for a moment, and finally took out something that was folded to a square from his sleeve. He said warmly, today when going out with Biao older brother, in a coincidence one saw there was a shop outside that was selling this and seeing that there were many buyers, I bought one. One heard that Biao younger sister dream a lot at night and this was soaked in a fragrance that has a calming effect. If Biao younger sister do not dislike, please accept it. Shin Miao was slightly surprised for a brief moment before looking up at the youth in front of her. Louis Ling was born with good looks. Even though he could not be compared to Shen Kaiyu's bravery, inferior to Zi Jingxing's handsomeness and even Ji Yushu looked more adorable than him, but this kind of gracefulness that came from the heart made one feel calm. Among the younger generation of the Louis family, Louis Ling was the most outstanding one, not because he was the most stable but because he could bear the entire responsibility of the entire clan, and had a sincere character. In the dark night, one could seemingly see Louis Ling's slightly red face. He said somewhat uncomfortably, if be a younger sister do not like. Shin Miao lightly took the thing in Louis Ling's hands and smiled, how can I refuse be our older brother kind feelings? Thanking be our older brother, Louis Ling lightly smiled. It is good that you like it. His brows were warm and his words were filled with concern. This originally was an attitude that made others comfortable and if it was any ordinary female, not to say being moved, one would have a very good impression and feelings for the person in front. But Shen Miao took a step back and looked at him, if there is nothing else. I will return to the room first. There was a trace of disappointment but it was very quickly covered up, would not trouble be a younger sister. 
He turned around and left. Shin Miao looked at Lui Ling's leaving figure and silently watched for a while. She was not some ignorant and innocent young female, even if she had not experienced the tenderness between men and women with Fu Zayu Yi. She had stayed in the palace for so many years. Lui Ling was a good person and to drag such a good person like this to her entire life filled with schemes and plotting, she would be too selfish. Even though Louis Ling was a good match, but since the Louis family treated her well, she could not return kindness with ingratitude. She turned around and returned to her room. After cleaning up, Jing's and Gu Yu withdrew and Shen Miao sat at the table before spreading out the thing that Louis Ling gave to her. That was a handkerchief and coincidentally it was a double-sided embroidery. The embroidered handkerchief currently most difficult to get in Ding Capital, so one think that Louis Ling had spent quite some money on buying this handkerchief. There was a white crane sewn on it, touching on his consistent desire and was exuding a faint fragrance that indeed made one feel relief and calm. Shin Miao scrutinized for a long time. This pattern on the handkerchief was apparently from Liu Ying's hands. Liu Ying's skills was one of the best in Ding Capital and what is more was, that there were very few number of double-sided embroidery in the Ming Chi. It seemed that Liu Ying was doing rather well. The more Shen Miao looked at it, her mood became better after being downcast from meeting those people in the rain. She felt a bit tired and took off her outer robe and was only wearing the middle clothes. She walked to the couch to sit down. Just as she was about to remove her middle clothes to rest, one heard a chuckle. Wait a moment. Shen Miao's hand paused and when she turned her head back, this time she could no longer hide her raging anger. He looked at that particular uninvited person outside the window and punctuated each word she said, Zi Jing Xing. That person entered the room and closed the window backhanded. It was done so leisurely as it was one's very own courtyard. This time he did not wear a mask and that handsome face was exposed under the lamplight and was very seductive. But Shen Miao just wanted to drag him out to be beheaded. Under the entire heavens, now only you can call my little name. Zi Jing Xing pulled out a chair casually and sat down not far from Shen Miao's couch before he laughed lightly, only you have that honor in the world. He had a tall stature that even when he sat down, he was much taller than Shen Miao. His imposing manner was not once relaxed at all. Shen Miao looked at him coldly. Prince Ruai is really very free every day, to be able to come here so familiarly from the Yanqing lane. Simple. Zi Jing Xing supported his chin, I have bought all the residences from the Yanqing lane to here. The residence next to where you are staying is also my courtyard. Keeping harmonious relations with neighbors, this prince came to visit. Shin Miao sucked in a mouthful of cold air. Even though the Yanqing lane was considered near to the Shen residence, there was still some distance. Zi Jing Xing bought all the residences from the Yanqing Lane to Shen residence. That meant that more than half of the southern city was his courtyard, and the courtyard beside the Shen residence was also bought by Zi Jing Xing. Even if Zi Jing Xing has money, it should not be spent like that. He squandered money like dirt. Was it that he brought all the money in the Great Liang's treasury over? Did Emperor Yongle of the Great Liang know about it? When she saw the desultory smile on Zi Jing Xing's face, Shen Miao started to get angry again. Zi Jing Xing was really shameless to even mention about keeping harmonious relations with his neighbors. Where was there people who would visit their neighbors in the middle of the night unsolicited? without so much as to give an invitation card. Is there no regulations in the Great Liang Imperial family? You do not look very happy. Zi Jing Xing looked at her with great interest. You can't tell me, this older brother, whatever difficulties. The identity of Prince Ruai is still helpful, on the account of old friendship. Shen Miao rolled her eyes at him. She could not understand what exactly was Zi Jing Xing thinking. However Zi Jing Xing's words reminded her about the words Ji Yu Shu said in the Feng's Yan Pawn Shop, and Shen Miao suddenly had a thought and deliberately asked, Zi Jing Xing, how do you see Madame Feng of the residence of the Marquis of Linen? Madame Feng of the residence of the Marquis of Linen, 
birth mother of Zi Chang Wu and Zi Chang Zhao, Madame Feng originally was more or less involved in the death of Princess Yu Qing, and everyone knew that Princess Yu Qing was a topic that could not be mentioned to Zi Jingxing, but she purposely mentioned it. Zi Jingxing looked at her with a smile but not a smile, want to dig information from my words. Are you willing to speak? It is of no harm to tell you. Zi Jingxing said lazily, in my eyes, inferior to ants. Xin Miao looked at him, why do you not kill her to take revenge? Zi Jingxing narrowed his eyes and stared at Shen Miao for a while before he suddenly laughed. His voice was like the peach blossom wine that was buried in the summer and dug out in the winter, bringing an intoxicating mellow breeze but was as cold as the winter, making one awake. He said, Shen Miao. You are worried that Shen Xin will become the second Zi Ding. Shen Miao eyes hang down, correct? She paused before speaking. If I was in your position, I will try every means to take revenge. Kill Madame Feng then kill her two sons. This is then considered revenge and also not living in vain. She said so indifferently, as if she did not find that her words were ruthless at all. When Zi Jing Xing heard them, he was not at all surprised and only laughed once seemingly laughing at her innocence. Zi Jing Xing, one did not kill Madame Fang due to disdain and also fear of trouble. Zi Ding and Princess Yu Qing are not related to me at all so why would I want revenge? Shen Miao was surprised for a moment. Shen Miao previously heard Zi Jing Xing saying that Zi Ding and him were not father and son. So she was not surprised but how was it that even Princess Yu Qing and Zi Jingxing had no relationship? If Zi Jingxing did not have Zi Ding's or Princess Yu Qing's blood in his vein then how could he be the D-son of the Zi family? Shen Miao's heart moved and she thought of something before asking Zi Jingxing, then Princess Yu Qing's son, dead. Zi Jingxing said blandly dead upon birth. But there was not a slightest wind about this at all. It seemed that that was the time when Zi Jingxing was foisted into it, and the identities were swapped but no one actually found out about it. One fear that even Princess Yu Qing herself would not know of the matter. If Zi Ding's son was alive, he would have had a premature death before the age of three. Zi Jingxing said indifferently, because it is me, Madame Feng dare not take action. Because, he laughed rather evilly, those people who were sent over mysteriously disappeared. Shin Miao was suddenly enlightened. She had previously said that Madame Fang could force Princess Yu Qing into such tough straits, that at the end she faded away like a flower. She was definitely one who had means and ambitions. So how would such a person live in seclusion of one's house and even let Zi Jingxing grow up safely? So it was the most inferior of schemes. The people that were sent out would always mysteriously disappear, so Madame Fang herself would feel that there was a devil's gate and path and settled for the next best thing. As to why those people would disappear, since Zi Jingxing was Prince Ruai of the Great Liang, there would be highly skilled personnel around, more than enough to deal with Madame Fang. At this moment those parts that she initially did not understand suddenly became clear, and forgot those matters that she was worried about. Zi Jingxing lowered his head and took a glance at her. You do not need to worry. Xin Xin is different from Zi Ding. Xin Miao said, I am also different from you. Zi Jingxing was slightly startled but continued to listen to Shen Miao you disdain and also it was not necessary. I am however different. If someone, like Madame Fang, shakes my family up, I will do everything in my power to make her suffer the consequences of her actions. Suppose that there is someone with bad intentions like Madame Fang who attempt to wreck, I will rip her inside out, and throw her to the unmarked graves to feed the dogs. When she spoke to the end, her head lowered but there were other surging emotions in her dark eyes. But as her head sank, one of Zi Jing, Xing's hands pressed on her head, just tell me if there are such people. Keeping harmonious relations with neighbors, I will kill her for you without leaving any potential future problems. Xin Miao shook off his hand and Zi Jing Xing smiled while looking at her. He had an undisciplined expression. His words were filled with jest and were casually spoken but in that pair of eyes, it seemed serious. If Zi Jingxing killed someone, it was indeed a breeze to kill a person like Madame Fang. Xin Miao said, these kind of things like killing other, I can do it myself. Unless it is the last moment, 
it is not a good move to take action personally. Zi Jingxing said, if you are really apologetic about it, then it is all right to give me something as a reward. Xin Miao mocked, Your Highness Prince Rui is as precious as gold and as respected as jade. I will not be able to afford the money to compare. Zi Jingxing smiled, give you two tenths discount. He stood up and strolled to the table where the handkerchief that Louis Ling gifted laid, spread out by Shen Miao just now. Zi Jingxing casually picked it up and took a sniff before raising an eyebrow, although the scent is inferior. The dog that this prince rays, is lately not sleeping well. This will be not bad to be used. Not waiting for Shen Miao to speak, Zi Jingxing kept the handkerchief in his sleeve. This is considered a compensation.